In this video, we're going to learn how to implement the game Rock, Paper, Scissors in C++. So in the game Rock, Paper, Scissors, two players make a throw, either rock, paper, or scissors. And the rules are that rock beats scissors, and scissors beats paper, and paper beats rock. All other possibilities mean the game is a draw. So if both players throw rock, then the game is a draw. And if there is a draw, then the players will continue to throw until there is a winner. Now for the player's move, we can use user input. For the AI's move, we're going to use random number generation. So we'll include the C stdlib library, because this library includes a function called rand that's going to allow us to generate a random integer. It also includes a function called srand that we're going to use to seed the random number generator. We're going to use the current time as a seed value. So we'll also include the seed time library because this library includes a function called time that allows us to get the current time. Now we'll also define preprocessor constants to represent rock, paper, and scissors. So we'll have number define rock one and number define paper two and number define scissors three. So then if we generate a random integer between one and three, it's going to represent either rock, paper, or scissors. Next, we'll seed the random number generator. So down here, we'll call srand, and we'll provide srand with the seed value as an argument. Now in C++, when we use the rand function, we're actually using pseudo random number generation what that means is that the sequence of random numbers that we get is going to be determined by the seed value that we provide to srand. So we want to provide srand with a seed value that's going to be different each time the program runs to ensure that our random numbers might be different each time the program runs. Otherwise, the game would be too predictable. So using the current time is going to be a good seed value because the current time is going to be different each time the program runs. So if we call the time function and supply it with the argument null, it's going to return the current time. And we can pass this to srand as our seed value. Now the time function is going to return the time as the type time underscore t, but the srand function expects an argument of the type unsigned int. What we can do is use a typecast here with unsigned int in brackets to convert that time underscore t value to an unsigned int. Next, we'll create variables to store the player throw and the AI throw. So here we'll have int player throw is equal to zero and int AI throw is equal to zero. And we've used int for the type of these variables because we're using the integers one, two, and three to represent rock, paper, and scissors. We'll also declare a variable of type bool called draw. And draw is going to keep track of whether or not the last game ended in a draw. Because if the last game ended in a draw, then we need to keep playing. We'll initialize draw to false. Next, we'll use a do while loop to continually have the user enter in their throw until there's a winner of the game. So we'll have here do and then while draw is true. So in the loop body where we play the game, if the game ends in a draw, we're going to set draw to true. That's going to make this loop condition true and the game is going to be played again. The first thing we'll do in the loop body is prompt the player to enter in their throw. So here we'll have a menu. We'll have C out, select your throw, followed by an end line. And then we'll have our menu options. We'll have one, for rock, followed by an end line, and two for paper, followed by an end line, and then three for scissors, followed by an end line, and then we'll ask them to enter the choice. So we'll have C out and selection with a colon. Then we'll use C in to store their selection into the player throw variable. So we'll have C in and then player throw. Now after this user input, we'll also output an inline to separate the user input from the game output. 
Next, we'll use the rand function to randomly generate the AI throw. So the rand function is going to return a random integer between zero and some very large positive integer. If we take that integer and apply modulus three, where modulus gives us the remainder of a division operation, that's going to give us a random integer between zero and two. And that's because the only possible remainders when dividing by three are zero, one, or two. So for example, if we had 10 divided by three, the remainder there is going to be one. If we had 11 divided by three, the remainder is going to be two. And if we had 12 divided by three, the remainder is going to be zero. And then for 13 divided by three, we're back to having a remainder of one. And it's going to proceed like this for all the possible random integers in this range. So if we take this and then add one to it, that's going to give us a random integer in the range one to three, which is exactly what we want to represent either rock, paper, or scissors. So here we'll have AI throw is equal to rand modulus three plus one, where rand is going to return a random integer in the range of zero to some very large positive integer. And then modulus three is going to take that and give us a random integer in the range zero to two. And then plus one is going to shift that range up to one to three, which is exactly what we want. So next, let's output the AI throw so that way the player knows what it is. So off here, if the AI throw is equal to rock, then we'll output here AI throws rock followed by an end line. Else if the AI throw is equal to paper, then we'll output here AI throws paper followed by an end line. And then finally, we'll have else if the AI throw is equal to scissors, then we'll output here AI throws scissors followed by an end line. And next we can actually check the result of the game based on the player and AI throws. So we'll set draw to false initially, and then we'll only set it to true if the game does end in a draw. And that's the first thing we'll check for. So if the player throw is equal to the AI throw, that means the game has ended in a draw. And in that case, we're going to set draw to true to continue the game. And we'll output here, draw, and then play again, followed by an inline. Otherwise, we're going to check all the other possibilities for the state of the game. So first we'll have else if the player throw is equal to rock and the AI throw is equal to scissors. In this case, the player is going to win. So we'll output here rock beats scissors and then you win followed by an end line else if the player throw is rock and the ai throw is paper this means the ai is going to win and we'll put here paper beats rock followed by you lose and an end line. Then we'll check the possibilities where the player throws paper. So we'll have else if the player throw is paper and the AI throw is rock. In this case, the player is going to win and we'll output here, see out paper beats rock, you win, followed by an end line. Then we'll have else if 
the player throw is paper and the AI throw is scissors. In this case, the player is going to lose. So we'll put here, see out scissors beats paper, you lose, followed by an end line. And then finally, we'll look at the possibilities where the player throws scissors. So else if the player throw is scissors and the AI throw is paper, this means the player is going to win. And we'll put here, scissors beats paper and you win, followed by an end line. And I'll just fix this here with scissors. And then we'll have one more possibility. Else if the player throw is scissors and the AI throw is rock. In this case, the player is going to lose. And we'll put here, rock beats scissors, followed by you lose and an end line. And then after we output the result of the game, we'll output an end line just in case the menu is presented to the user again in the case of a draw. And we can delete this here now as well. And remember the game is going to be played again if draw is set to true, which is going to happen if there is a draw. We can now test this out. So we'll save, compile, and run the program. And first we'll be prompted to enter in our throw. We'll enter in rock by putting in one. And we get here, AI throw scissors, rock beat scissors, you win. We'll try it again. This time we'll enter in paper. And now we get AI throw scissors, scissors beats paper, you lose. We'll try it again. And this time we'll enter in scissors. And now we get AI throw scissors, draw, play again. This time we'll try paper. And now we get AI throw scissors, scissors beats paper, you lose. So the game is working correctly. And this is how we can implement the game rock, paper, scissors in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.